Welcome to Lakeside Community Lutheran Church on this Resurrection of Our Lord, Easter Day. Glad to have you here today as we welcome the crucified and risen Christ here today. And the banner is raised here in our gathering hymn as we praise God who raises Jesus from the dead. It's coming Tuesday is our uh, council meeting and invite uh, prayers for wisdom and discernment in the next stage of this congregation's journey. Next Sunday then will be the second Sunday of Easter and uh, this text on that day then is Jesus showing him his hands and so will be the hands of the risen Christ. Glad for all of you are here today and we invite you to pass the French, uh, friendship pad, attendance pad as well. And uh, do we have an announcement here this morning then? Okay. Happy Easter! <laughs> he is risen indeed. Uh, we have um, uh, like to thank all those people who donated the beautiful flowers for our, our Easter garden. And right after service today, we'll be giving those that people that donated their plant back. And so you can um, take it home and take care of it, and uh, we don't have to. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll see um, everybody that donated. And be sure to take a look at the list of the Easter Flower Garden 2023. It's in your bulletin. Thank you. Again, welcome today and our, now our call to worship. The Resurrection Announcement According to John Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples sent out went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Now supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, let me tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Roboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Our gathering hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. This is the day the Lord has made. Our hymn of praise, Alleluia, Jesus lives. The prayer of the day. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Invited to share a greeting of peace. Peace, Marsha.
The first reading for today is found in Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Now he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through Jesus' name. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2 and 14 through 24. We will read responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Shall we stand for the reading of the Gospel? After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead. Indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. And there you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There you will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. 
may be seated. Dear people of God, of the resurrection, grace be unto you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Who to believe? What to believe? Last Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem to the sounds of praise, Hosanna in the highest, he who comes in the name of the Lord. It seems as if events quickly deteriorated as the week went on. Jesus then gathered his disciples with him for the last meal. We call it the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper. And there he inst begins or institutes a new meal on the Passover. My body given for you, my blood shed for you. Given and shed for the forgiveness of sins. On Friday of that week, Jesus is crucified on a cross between two thieves. He speaks some words, words of living from a dying man. And on Friday for our Good Friday service, we heard those words. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. I thirst, and it is finished. Today, then, we gather on this, the resurrection of our Lord, Easter Day. And Matthew tells us here that on this resurrection day, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. It's the least they could do, pay their last respects to this one who had met, meant so much to them. And so now they go to pay their respects to him. But as Matthew tells the story, there's suddenly a great earthquake. Earthquakes then are common in that particular region. But in this particular case, it speaks then of a powerful working of God. It is as if the whole world shakes apart because of what is to happen. And then there is an angel descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. Angels then are messengers then from God called to bring an important announcement. Through the scriptures then they bring these important announcements and here in this particular story from Matthew then we hear this announcement as well. Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. Indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. The angel then brings this announcement to them. And so today we ask the question, who to believe and what to believe? The angel comes and gives this announcement for you today. Jesus Christ is raised for you. Go quickly and tell others as well. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. Certainly mixed emotions here. Joy that he is raised. Fear. Actually someone who's just been through an earthquake and heard an angel appear to them would be filled with fear as well. Awe and wonder as well as trepidation. Fear and joy. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Like the angel said, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, for they will see me. Actually, Jesus had prepared his disciples then for this event here. And we hear a number of times in Matthew's Gospel then, in which he gives this prediction of his passion. And uh, in the 16th chapter it says, Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. And from that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, undergo great sufferings at the hands of elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed on the third day, be raised again from the dead. All those who believe then endure to the end will be saved. And then again, we hear the same prediction in the 17th chapter here, in which uh, Jesus again foretells his death and resurrection. As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him on the third day, and he will be raised. And they were greatly distressed. Certainly, as Jesus predicts his passion and resurrection then, they don't know quite what to make of it. 
and they are deeply distressed. Well, we hear of uh, still another passion prediction then, the third time Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. Well, Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples by himself and said to them, see, we are going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death. They will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified, and on the third day, he will be raised. Who to believe, what to believe. Today is the account of Jesus being raised from the dead. And three times before that, Jesus predicted then that he'd be crucified and killed, and on the third day, rise again from the dead. At the same time, though, there's another story. And even as we hear the, pro the resurrection proclaimed, we hear the resurrection denied. Previous to our story here today, it says the guard at the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what this imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. So in other words, these, uh, these uh, remember him saying that, even as he said that to his disciples. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception could be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard, made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. And so we, here we have then in the resurrection account, we have the proclamation of the resurrection. But the counter story to that is deny the resurrection. Who to believe, what to believe. You've got to give credit to Matthew here. He gives both sides of the story. And then right afterwards, we hear the story of the report of the garden, who put it this way. While they were going, some of the guard went to the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, you must say, his disciples came by night and stole him away while he was asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Jews today. Who to believe? What to believe? The angel says, he's risen. He's going before you. Go ahead and tell. But on the other hand, there's a counter story. Denies the resurrection. Pay the soldiers a bribe to keep shut. Tell a different story. We have here a story and a counter story. Who to believe? What to believe? Anyway, well, the counter story didn't start just here. It started way before this, did it not? And so we hear it even at the very beginning of Matthew's gospel here that uh, Herod the Great then hears of this one Jesus from the Magi, the wise men. He's terribly infuriated, a threat to his throne. And so we hear in one of the passages from Matthew uh, that's oftentimes glossed over. It's called the Massacre of the Innocents. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated. He sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. So Mary and Joseph are warned in a dream to escape to Egypt, this they do. Then they get another dream, said Herod the Great has died, it's safe to return. Well, we hear here of uh, Herod the uh, Tetrarch, the second Herod then, in the story then of John the Baptist and of Jesus as well. And uh, in this particular story then, we hear the death of John the Baptist at that time, Herod the ruler heard reports about Jesus, and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. For this reason, these powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, 
because John had been telling him, it is not lawful for you to have her. And then the rest of the story goes on that uh, uh, the young girl dances for Herod. He's greatly pleased, and uh, he offers her an opportunity or a choice, and she asks her mother, and her mother says, the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And so we have here then that this Herod too also is deeply offended by this one, John the Baptist, whom he is forecasting in Jesus Christ as well. We can go on as well. Uh, Matthew does not include Jesus appearing before Herod, but uh, Luke does. And so we have the story then of Jesus appearing before Herod in the Gospel, uh, or, uh, uh, Gospel of Luke. And then in the Acts of the Apostles, we hear still the next Herod who put James and John to death. They are the first Christian martyrs. Who to believe? What to believe? The angels proclaim the resurrection, but the authorities deny the resurrection. Today, the question is asked, who to believe, what to believe? Well, actually, uh, Jesus warns then of persecutions, and in the 10th chapter of Matthew here, puts it this way. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. You will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. And when they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. And then the encouragement, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. We have another warning uh, much along the same lines as well later on in the Gospel of Matthew. Percusions foretold, then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death. You'll be hated by the nations because of my name. Then many of you will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise and lead many astray. Because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. The one who endures to the end will be saved. Now at the very end of the Gospel of Matthew, then Jesus makes uh, an astounding claim. He puts it this way as he gives the Great Commission. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And go therefore and all the nations make disciples and baptizing them and teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you and lo, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Jesus then says, all authority has been given to me and this is my great commission to you. Who to believe? What to believe? On the one hand, the angel proclaims Jesus Christ is risen. And in our tradition, then, we say he is risen indeed. But the counter story is to deny the resurrection. And the authorities will do anything possible to squelch and deny this great story. And so today, you are left with a question here on this resurrection of our Lord, Easter Day. Who to believe? What to believe? And how you answer that question will make all the difference in the world. Here again, the words of the angel. He is risen, he is not here. Do not be afraid. Go ahead and tell the others in Galilee that he waits to meet you there, even as he told you. Thanks be to God, amen. Our, gospel, our uh, hymn of the day here then is, uh, Alleluia, Jesus is risen.
On this, the resurrection of our Lord Easter day, we seek to make the good profession of faith. On the third day, he rose again, ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to judge the living and the dead as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and my life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer song, Jesus Christ is risen today. Made alive to God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. O God, in Christ's death and resurrection, your church is reborn. Bless your people in every nation, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, and Pentecostal. Raise us up to witness together to your undying love for this world. O God, your faithfulness extends to all the earth, and on this Easter morn, we pray for our creation. Make terror and destruction cease and renew all things in the bright dawning of your love. No God, the resurrection of your Son means life for every nation. And show us the promise and hope. Heal nations scarred by injustice and greed. Give hope to those ravaged by violence. No God, your Son healed all who are oppressed. Bless those who heal and show compassion in Jesus' name, even as we pray for the many among us who are still in need and cannot be with us here today. Marilyn, Anne, John, Tom, Faith, Mark, Barb, Dorothy, Michael. Those fighting addictions, people in crisis, deployed military and families, leaders, children, and peace in Ukraine, as well as all others whom we bring before you at this particular time. O oh God, in the waters of baptism, you call us by name and raise us to new life in you. Renew us all with faith, hope, and love that we might be Christ's risen body in the world. O oh God, be with our Congregational Council convening this coming Tuesday. Give wisdom and discernment as this congregation moves ahead on the next stage of this journey during this in-between period between installed pastors. O oh God, we give you thanks for the wider church and ask that you will use the wider church to proclaim the resurrection of our Lord, conference synod churchwide, Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran World Federation, the Bible Camps, and many other partner agencies in which we work together to do the work we cannot do alone. Know God, we give thanks for the saints whose lives proclaim the victory of your love, and with, us, with them give us courage to follow our crucified and risen Lord until all things are gathered in his name. We give, we give thanks especially for those who have gone before us, in whose memory flowers have been given. We ask that you will bless the memory of those who have gone on before us and bless those who have graciously donated the flowers for our service here today. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Savior. Amen.
glory, receive these gifts in the offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your glory in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, darkness to light, and from death to life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass. Our sending song, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing.
name. No, I think just leave it. Yeah. I think. Not as everyone has one, so the fourth one. 